Okay, the live stream is up. Will all sergeants start their recordings? Computer recording rolling. All right, the cloud has started. Backup is rolling. And Keith, start with the opening statement, please. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to the remote hearing on the Committee on Land Use. Will council members and staff please turn on your video at this time? Thank you. To minimize disruptions, please place your cell phones and electronics to vibrate. You may send your testimony to land use testimony at nyc.gov. That's land use testimony at nyc.gov. Chair Salamanca, we're ready to begin. Thank you, Sergeant of Arms. Good morning. I am Councilmember Rafael Salamanca, Chair of the Committee on Land Use. I am joined remotely uh, by my colleagues, Council Members Ku Ayala, Baron Borelli, Brooke Powers, Diaz Senior, Felice Gibson, Redenchik Levin, Chair Moya, Chair Riley, and Chair Riley. Today we will vote on applications referred out from both of our subcommittees. But before we begin, I want to recognize the committee council to review the remote meeting procedures. Thank you, Chair Salamanca. I am Julie Lubin, counsel to this committee. Council members who would like to ask questions or make remarks should use the Zoom raise hand function. The raise hand button should appear at the bottom of the participant panel. I will announce council members who have questions or remarks in the order that they raise their hands. Chair Salamanca will then recognize members to speak. We ask that you please be patient. Any technical difficulties arise today. Chair Salamanca will now continue with today's agenda items. Thank you, Council. So from our zoning subcommittee, we will vote to approve with modifications, LU 770 and 771, the Governor's Island Rezoning Proposal, related to property in Council Member Chin's district in Manhattan. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment to change an existing R3-2 district to a C4-1 district and a related zoning text amendment to modify the existing Special Governor's Island District by establishing a new sub-district for the north and south portions of the island and a new provision applicable within the proposed South Island sub-district. Our modifications will reduce the proposed overall density by capping the aggregated floor area at 3,775,000 square feet, allow a full build out of floor area in the Southern sub-district only with the provision of use group three and four community facility uses, exclusive of ambulatory diagnostic and treatment health facilities, cap hotel and office space use in the Southern, in the southern sub-district, limit permitted obstruction in an open space sub-area to no more than 20%, and sub obstructions will be included in the aggregated floor area calculations. Prohibit CPC authorization to increase allowed uses in the open space sub area. Significantly reduce building heights to 200 feet or below, except for one parcel at 225 feet. Change bulk rules to match reduced base heights and require bicycle parking in accordance with applicable zoning. And for uses not specified in zoning at a rate of one per 10,000 square feet of floor area. I congratulate Council Member Chin in achieving these modifications, and I invite her to provide some remarks related to additional comments for Governor's Island, but we'll continue. The Governor's Island Trust. We will also vote to approve the modifications LU-753-754 and pre-considered LU-763 for the Sudan Street rezoning proposal related to property in Council Member Reynoso's district in Brooklyn. The proposal seeks zoning map and zoning tax amendment and a zoning special permit to facilitate the development of a new 100% affordable housing residential building with approximately 95 dwelling units at 1250 Willow, Willow, Willow B Avenue, along with the enlargement of an existing industrial building at 349 Sudan Street. Our modifications will be to strike MIH option two and add the deep affordable option while retaining MIH option one. We will vote to approve pre considers LU 772 for the 86 Fleet Place Tax Amendment related to property in Majority Leader Cummel's District in Brooklyn. The proposal seeks a zoning tax amendment to modify the special downtown Brooklyn District use regulations to facilitate the operation of community facility at the site. We will also vote to approve pre considers 773 and 774 the, for the 68 19 Woodhaven Boulevard rezoning related to property in Council, in, in council Member. Kazowitz District in Queens. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment to change existing C8-1 R and R4 District to R6A and R6A slash C2-3 districts and a related zoning tax amendment to establish mandatory inclusionary housing area utilizing option one and option two. We will vote to approve the modification pre considers LU 775 and 776 for the 431 Concord Avenue rezoning 
related to property in Council Member Ayala's district in the Bronx. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment to change an existing M1-2 district to an R7D, together with the related zoning text amendment to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area utilizing option one or option two. A modification will be to remove MIH option two while retaining option one. From a landmark subcommittee, we will vote to approve pre-considers application number 20215023, HAK, the South Portland tax exemption amendment submitted by the Department of Housing Preservation and Development related to property in Council Member Cuomo's district in Brooklyn. This application requests approvals of an amendment to resolution 425 for the year 2018 to amend a previously approved article 11 tax exemption to exempt community facility space located at block 2003, lot 37. We will also vote to approve LU 759, the 97th Street, 169th Street project. This application was submitted by the Department of Housing Pre Housing Preservation and Development, requesting the designation of property located at 97 West 169th Street in the Bronx as an urban development action area, as well as approval of an urban development action area project for such area and disposition of such property to a developer to be selected by HPD. These actions will facilitate the development of a nine story building containing approximately 104 affordable housing units and community facility space. This project is located in council district represented by council member Gibson. We will vote to approve LU 760, the Landmark Preservation Commission designation of the Harriet and Thomas Trudell's House, developed in 227 Duffield Street in Brooklyn as a historic landmark. The, the site is significant as the home of a prominent abol abol abolitionist and is believed by some to have been a stop on the Underground Railroad. It is located in Council Member Levin's district. We will also vote to approve with two items for facility phase two of the Sendero Verde project approved by, by the council in 2017. We will vote to approve LU 761 for the amendment of previously approved U urban development action area project. We will also approve LU 762 to amend a previously approved article 11 tax exemption. The previously approved project would have included approximately 652 dwelling units, approximately 36,218 square feet of commercial space, and approximately 161,440 square feet of community facility. The amended project would include approximately 707 dwelling units, approximately 6,213 square feet of commercial space, and approximately 87,278 square feet of community facility space. The affected property is located at block 1617, lot 20, 120, 125, and 140 in Manhattan Council District represented by Council Member Ayala. Members of the committee and members representing affected districts who have questions or remarks about today's items, please use the raise hand button. Council, will you announce members in the order that their hands were raised? I currently don't see any hands raised. All right, great. So seeing no hands raised, I now call for a vote in accordance with the recommendations of the subcommittees and the local members to approve LU 759, 760, 761, 762, 772, 773, 774, and pre-considered application numbers 2021-5024-HAK, and to approve the modifications I've described, LUs 753, 754, 760, 63770, 771, 775, and 776. Will the clerk please call the roll? Good morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good morning, William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on land use. All items are coupled. Chair Salamanca. Aye or no. Thank you. Gibson. Permission to explain. Councilmember Gibson to explain her vote. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Salamanca. Good morning, colleagues. I just wanted to speak very briefly about my land use application that relates to the construction of senior affordable housing in my district at 97 West 169th Street in the High Bridge community. Uh, this project is going to transform the High Bridge community. It is going to provide over 100 units of affordable senior housing, studio and one bedroom apartments, as well as social services on site. Uh, the construction of an FQHC, as well as all the amenities for many of our seniors. Uh, it is a part of the Jerome Neighborhood Plan that was passed 
by this council back in 2017. And I'm really grateful to the Bronx Borough President, Ruben Diaz Jr., Bronx Community Board 4 and its leadership and all of the community residents, as well as the applicant, HPD, and the community group that is going to uh, operate this building, Wishfish, Westside Federation for Senior and Supportive Housing. Um, thank you, Chair Riley, for holding a hearing on this recently and hearing from the applicant and being able to make sure that it is 100% affordable. They're going to be local hiring and MWBE provisions and, and local employment opportunities for the residents, uh, as well as making sure that this project brings such value to the Highbridge community. Corporal Fisher Apartments, I'm very proud of. I've worked very hard on this over the years, and I asked all of my colleagues on land use to vote to support this, to bring affordable housing to Highbridge, to the borough of the Bronx. I vote aye on all of today's agenda items. Thank you, Chair. Congratulations, Council Member Gibson. Thank you, Council Member Barron. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Council Member Barron to explain her vote. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, it's very interesting that we'll be voting on two pieces, uh, two pieces of two, two bills that are before us today that are in fact a reflection of legislation that we approved in 2004. And I'm talking about the uh, South Portland Article 11 piece of legislation and the Harriet and Thomas Truesdale home landmark designation of their home. Um, in 2004, the city council announced a large urban uh, renewal project in downtown Brooklyn. That project was intended to be able to increase the operation of commercial space, but in fact, the results have done quite the contrary and it's resulted in high towers coming in and um, the income levels displacing people who presently had been living there at that time. Just want to briefly talk about the, uh, the home at 227 Duffield Street. The city council approved it, but there were members who objected to the possible destruction of that home. It was council member Charles Barron, council member uh, Letitia James, and council member Al Van. They were very concerned that there might be a destruction of historical significance of the home that was located there. So they, they required a study. The Economic Development Corporation hired a company to do the study. The study came back, well, uh, we've talked to experts and they say that there is in fact no substance to substantiate that. That report was a lie. That report was fraudulent. It became exposed as such. And that was the main reason that that home was able to not be demolished uh, through the city eminent domain policy. There was a long battle over the years, I won't get into that, but I'm glad to see that at this point, that home will be restored, that home will be maintained, and it will get its significance in terms of a part of Black history, particularly here in Brooklyn, New York, and also the church that is uh, at uh, Felix Street, I believe it is, that is uh, applying for the Article 11. That's because also they have been uh, subjected to having the members that have been in their community displaced and now they're struggling to stay alive. So I just wanna say we need to be very mindful of the bills that we advance, particularly in our community and our committee because of the impact that it can have years down the line perhaps even 20 years down the line. And with that, I'm voting aye on all with the exception of 770, 771, and 774. I think that giving Governor's Island to private developers without a requirement that certain conditions be met is a disservice to maintaining really open space and preserving the environment. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Barrett. Who? Hello, I will I. Thank you, Levin. I vote I. Traeger. I. Gordenchik. I love that wish fish name, I'm voting I. Adams. I vote I. Thank you, Ayala. Hi. Thank 
Thank you. Ruben Diaz Sr. I vote aye. Moya. I vote aye. Riley. I vote aye. Brooks Powers. Permission to explain my vote? Yes, Council Member Brooks Powers to explain her vote. Um, so I'd like to vote aye on all, but I'd like to put on record my concerns with the development of Governor's Island, um, reducing or not having enough open space. I think we all um, recognize how valuable our uh, open space real estate is, especially in a city like New York through this pandemic. And developing on that island should um, prioritize um, security maintaining our open space, our access to open space um, and taking in that into account. So I did want to have that on record, but I will go for it and vote aye um, on all. Thank you. Thank you. Feliz. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Borelli. I vote aye, thank you. Thank you. One moment. Okay, by a vote of 15 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, all items have been adopted by the committee with land use items 770, 771, and 774 being adopted by the committee 14 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. Mr. Chair, I believe we are waiting for more members. Uh, yeah, we're going to go on, um, we're gonna leave the roll open for another five minutes. So I would like to thank members of the public, my colleague, Council and Land Use staff and Sergeant at Arms for attending today's hearing. Um, and let's leave the uh, roll open for five minutes. Yes, the meeting can stand at ease while we wait. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Sergeant, this is uh, Councilmember Reynoso, I'm in. Good morning, Councilmember Reynoso. This is William Martin, committee clerk. Uh, we are ready for your vote when you are. I vote aye on all. Thank you, sir. One moment. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, thank you. A final vote on today's committee on land use. All items have been adopted by the committee, 16 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, with the exceptions of land use items 770, 771, and 774, which have been adopted by the committee, 15 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Clerk.